What is going on guys? We're back playing some more surviving with rotary craft. Now today guys we're actually going to be diving into some electro craft which is an awesome mod that works really well with reactor craft and rotary craft and it allows you to turn rotational power into actual electrical power and then you can store that in some really big batteries and easily move it then you can turn that electrical power back into rotational power so the main goal for today is going to be to turn the turbines rotational power that we're getting from reactor craft into electrical power, put it in a battery, and then bring it all the way up here and swap that out for the performance engine. And we're gonna make this extractor run almost instantaneously. So I think it's gonna be really awesome. We're also going to get to use the, I think it's called the CVT unit, which is gonna pretty much be the equivalent of a 32 to one uh, gearbox, which is really cool. So it's a lot of new stuff that we haven't touched upon and there is a lot of crafting, so we're gonna jump into it. So. Today you might notice that I do have a lot of stuff in my inventory already and the reason behind that is because a lot of this dust up here that took me forever to get, specifically uh, pretty much just the quartz dust took a little bit to get, redstone wasn't really that bad, but the diamond and quartz dust was kind of annoying. This is what we're going to be using to make one battery. So we'll start out with the battery. So. Pretty much there's a ton of batteries that are offered by Electrocraft, and obviously they go up as they, you know, get more expensive, they hold more energy. So you can see they have the redstone battery, then the lustrous battery, then azulant battery, Proce procyon battery, uh, graphene battery, and then auroral battery. And that's pretty much going to be the best one you can get. So that is... 281.5 terajoules the one we're going to be making today is going to be the graphene battery it's going to be 1.1 terajoules that'll be more than enough for what we're actually going to be messing around with today but the reason that it's going to take so much to make is because we need the graphene energy crystal and this is one of those things where then you need four procyon energy crystals sorry if i'm pronouncing that wrong but then to make one of those you need four azulin energy crystals and to make those you need four lustrous energy crystals and to make those you need four redstone energy crystals which requires an energy crystal dust so i think i have the correct amount set up here but what we're going to need to do is grab all this out craft it into what we need and then i'm going to have to start smelting this while we craft all the other stuff so my question is we can make this in the regular crafting table right yes yes we can so I think we're gonna need four stacks. Each recipe is gonna get us two. So need two stacks of pretty much every portion of the recipe and I think we'll be good to go. Okay, so we're gonna take all this energy crystal dust downstairs and we're gonna start cooking it down. It might take a little bit just because this isn't the fastest setup over here. And oh, you know what? I forgot a hopper for this. So I'm actually gonna go, I'm gonna go grab a hopper. I wanna say we have some in here. Yeah, we do. This is where I store like all my extra rotary craft stuff, but a lot of the time I forget what's actually in that chest and then uh, I just never use it. So there we go. That should be good. Hopefully it is. So we'll leave those there. We will come back to those in a little bit. And now we get to actually go and craft the motor and the generator and some of the wires. So I guess I can discuss the batteries and all this stuff right now in between this. So the batteries are pretty much like I described. They're for storing the electrical power that you're going to generate and they pretty much are just like a buffer in long-term storage. You can easily break them and move them without losing any of the power, and you pretty much input the power in any of the sides, and then you can pull the power out the top using the wires, of course, and all you have to do is apply a redstone signal, so it's really easy to flip a lever on and off to turn this on and off. And yeah, that's pretty much it. There's really no information on this side. It tells you all about input and output on the bottom, and um, the output current voltage and power of a battery are constant, uh, retain, yeah, so pretty much just, you can you know charge them up move them and use them again and that's what we're going to be doing right over here the main reason i'm doing this is because i don't feel like moving this setup all the way downstairs and i would like to use the extractor with the uh you know turbines power but bringing the power all the way up here is kind of a hassle using rotational power so this is kind of going to simplify that a little bit so now that we've gone over the batteries we are going to talk about the induction generator so this is going to be what we're going to use to actually turn the rotational power into actual uh, electrical power. So if we go to conversion, it's just the induction generator and the induction motor. So pretty much this converts rotational shaft power to electrical power. Uh, one thing that's important to note, the magnitude of input torque is proportional to the current output and the magnitude of input speed is the voltage output. So if you're curious, uh, eventually if you ever use a transformer or something as to what it's gonna alter, you can always look back at this one. So just remember torque is current 
and speed is voltage. And now if you look at this, it just says it requires eight nanometers um, and that gets eight volts. So we're not gonna have to worry about any of that just because we're gonna be using the turbine, which is gonna be absurd amounts of power. And then if we come over to the induction motor, it's gonna convert the electrical power back into shaft power using inverse ratios and it's pretty much lossless and what they mean by that is if you were to put these two next to each other they would pretty much lose no power um not all wires are lossless though so we'll talk about that in a little bit um yeah so the only exception is the motor can only connect to a finite number of power sources and it can waste power if you connect it to any more we don't need to worry about that we're only going to be having one power source and we should be good to go with that so these are actually relatively easy to craft and that's pretty much what's sitting in my inventory so for the uh, induction generator and I forgot we got to make the generator over here Oh, doesn't want to let us do that okay so the generator is going to take oh that's right okay so the generator is in the regular crafting table and then we need to use the rest of that recipe in the other work table okay so the generator is just two gold coils and a shaft core so we can grab that out now we can hop back over and actually craft this Oh, doesn't want to let us do that okay so we'll manually put all the stuff in so it's gonna take uh, one steel ingot, three base panels, an impeller. Uh, so the three base panels, steel ingot, and then come back in here. It's going to take tin. Uh, it can be rotary craft, nether tin, electric craft tin. Really, the only difference is if you process it using the um, extractor, you're going to get a rotary craft version of it. If you don't, it's going to be an electric craft version. So that's going to be copper right up here. Then it's going to be tin. And what was over in that corner? I am forgetting. So that's going to be nickel, which is right there. So there we go. We have the induction generator. And now to make the induction motor, it's going to be... Oh, we can't click that one in there either just because we've got all the different versions in this of the, um, of the different ingots that we have. Uh, so we're going to be using silver, copper, and more silver up at the top. And there we go. And then the bottom is going to be base panels. And let me... See if I remember, was it another copper? Yeah, it was. Okay, so there we go. We got the induction motor now. So we're good to go on that front. Now, the next thing that we need to worry about is going to be using the platinum ingots right here to make wires. So we can go over those now and look at transport. So wires are relatively simple. Uh, they're easy to craft and they're not lossless except for the highest tier of wire. So it's pretty much going to be like every other wire. You're going to look at um, the ability to transport power, um, it'll tell you how much loss they have over a certain distance, and pretty much other than that, there's nothing special about them. So if we want to go in and look at all the wires, we're going to be making the platinum wire. These are all really easy to make except the super conducting wire, which is going to be the lossless one. But if we hold shift over the platinum wire, the voltage loss is 16 volts per meter, and the max current is, what is that, 131,072 amps. So that'll be fine for today. We don't need to make the superconducting wire, but you can see looking at these two, there is a big difference in the uh, annoyance of crafting it. It's not really much more expensive to craft this one, but it is a lot easier to just craft, uh, you know, half a stack of platinum wire. So we are going to be losing a little bit, but we're not transporting this uh, over a huge distance, and that's going to be in the work table. Okay, so there we go. We got 32 platinum wires. That'll be more than enough for today. I don't even think we're going to use, you know, more than five of these, if that. But now that we have that, we can come in here and grab out all the rest of this stuff, which should be, for the most part, crafting uh, the rest of the battery. And the last thing we're going to be making outside of the battery is going to be the CVT unit. So you can find this in the Rotary Craft Handbook, which we should have right in here. But if we go in the Rotary Craft Handbook, we can go into the transmission and then we can go over to the second page, CVT unit, and uh, it pretty much is continuously variable transmission unit. Um, it's a dynamic gearbox. You can put in different belts, which are each going to work as a two to one ratio, and it's capped out at 32 to one. Uh, it requires lubricant to function, but it's the same idea as a diamond gearbox in the sense that it is going to take the lubricant initially and it's never going to consume that. So it's really nice. And we're going to be using this as a 32 to one gearbox. I believe we can scale it even higher by uh, in terms of scaling speed up after we hook the battery up to the extractor, but there really is no point. It's almost instantaneous with the speed we're going at. So 32 to one should be relatively close to what we're going to need. Uh, the next thing that we are going to be making, I guess we should make this first, but we need to craft the shaft bearings, which require ball bearings, which just require some steel. So we're going to be making two sets of these. So I got to come over here really quick and make two sets of these and then grab these out. And 
There we go. So we need four of those, and then that should be good for all that. Hopefully we can shift click that in there. Yes, we can. And then lastly, we need to make the belts. And I hope I'm not forgetting anything after this. I don't think I am, uh, other than actually making the battery. The belts are really easy, though. We're going to need 16 to cap it out, since you can have a max ratio of 32 to 1, and it requires uh, each one to make it 2 to 1. So it's just going to be 16 leather, and I can't remember where those... Yeah, those wasn't the work table. So there we go. We're going to make two sets of those, 16 belts. That'll allow us to max it out. We got the lubricant bucket. And now it's time to come down here and see how this is doing okay is it almost done oh wow this thing is so slow okay you know what i'm gonna hop off camera i'll let this finish because we've already spent a ton of time crafting and then we will jump back and make the battery and we'll be good to go okay guys so we are back everything is cooked down the redstone energy crystals are good to go i've gathered all the redstone that we're gonna need i want to say this is the exact amount assuming i was able to do my math correct but it's like 3 a.m so probably not so we're looking at one, two, three, four, five stacks, and then 61 redstone. So let's see if I was correct. Uh, so we have the redstone energy crystal base. Then we have the lustrous energy crystal, which do these not need the work table? Oh, they don't. Okay. There we go. Okay. So the lustrous energy crystal uh, got those. And then we have the Azulan energy crystal. So we have those. And then we have the... Procyon energy crystal and then we have the graphene energy crystal okay so I was incorrect on the redstone amount I was correct on the the redstone energy crystal amount but not the regular redstone amount unfortunately okay so the next thing that we're gonna be doing is actually making the battery for this one and that's relatively easy to do oh great it doesn't want to let me click it in there so we've got the wool the steel around the corners, and then we've got the inductive ingot and the sintered tungsten ingot, and that's going to give us the graphene battery. So I did have backup redstone in there in case I had a little bit too too little redstone, but uh, it looks like we were good to go. So we have the battery, CVT unit, and the belts for that. We've got the wires, the motors, and the generator. So we should be good to go on this and ready to set it up. So I'm on like I'm gonna add an annotation because there's so much crafting in this episode. Like half of it's been crafting already. So yeah, most of you might have already skipped to right here. So now we're gonna actually set this up. So the first thing we need to do is make the electrical power from the rotational power. So we're going to head down to the turbine. And like I said, we're going to be using the high temperature gas reactor just because I actually prefer using that one. Um, it, in my opinion, works a lot nicer, but we're going to use that. And to hook this up, I have had a dynamometer here for a while, but it was pointless because I forgot I was going to need to cover this stone brick. Uh, or I was going to have to put stone brick right here to prevent steam from escaping. So... Yeah, so we're just going to throw down the induction generator right over here. It's got rotational power that should be going in. Yeah, so, oh, okay, so it's got rotational power that should be going in right there. And we're going to throw this down, and it should be good. So now we can pull the power out. Um, I'm going to put a wire right here just to show you guys. So you put a wire right there, and then we're going to throw down the battery on the side. Now the battery accepts power in any of the sides, and then you're going to output it at the top with a redstone signal. So we should be good to just uh, start charging it. I think we actually could just put the graphene battery right adjacent to the induction generator, but I thought I'd show you guys a wire actually inputting the power, so I normally wouldn't do it like this. So we can see it's at 0 joules at a 1.1 terajoules, which is going to take a while to charge up. But this should be ready to run, and we should be able to flip this on. One thing I want to point out is I did add another pressurizer, so we shouldn't have any steam escaping. If we do, I'll have to cut the video, get rid of the steam, and then come back, because it's going to cause huge FPS drops. So we can flip that on, and we can come back here, and this should be charging. So yeah, you can see this charge is really fast, and that's the turbine is starting to you know get to its max speed. So this will not take long to actually charge. Um, eventually, off-camera, I will craft a better battery, but... It's almost at the max. Oh, no, wait. What am I talking about? It's going to take a while to charge because it goes to gigajoules and then terajoules. That's right. It's going to take a million uh, megajoules to actually get this. So I'm going to let this charge for a little bit, and then we will hop back again, and we'll go upstairs. Uh, I just want to make sure we have enough power to actually allow this to run. It will consume a decent amount of power, and there's really no point in not charging it right now. Um, 
so that we can just try and consume that fuel and I can refill it as quickly as possible. So we'll be back in a little bit. Okay guys, so we are back again. I let it charge for a little bit, but then steam started escaping. So we got to pretty much 81 gigajoules if we're rounding. I think that should be more than enough for what we're gonna be processing today. So what we're gonna do right now is we're just gonna mine this battery out and it's gonna try and get sucked up by the item vacuum, but we're gonna get it. And if we look here, you can see it maintains the power, which is great. And then we're gonna head upstairs and I'll just leave that wire there because there's we're not gonna need it up here. But we're gonna head upstairs and we're gonna hook this up to the extractor. So a lot of people were telling me that I should hook up the extractor to the turbine because it puts out a ton of um, power and it can run this really fast and you know that it would be awesome to do and i think it would be awesome to do but it would have been a pain in the butt and that's why we're doing this so we're going to be getting rid of the steel gearbox that's over here we're going to be getting rid of the performance engine and we're going to have to keep the water just because the extractor needs water for a portion of the processing i want to say it's two and three not sure i know it's definitely two i don't know if three requires it but we're going to put uh the cvt unit right where the gearbox was flip it around and then we are going to put the belts in. So we're gonna shift click those all in. Okay, so turns out I actually misread this and we are going to need 32 belts. So I made a couple more and we're back and now we have this whole thing completely full. So we go to 32, we can press enter, it's gonna put 32 as the belt ratio and then we can start throwing the rest of this down. So the next thing we're gonna need to throw down is going to be the induction motor, which we can have going straight into the CVT unit. So we can flip that around over there and I guess the the water is going to be a little bit awkward with how it's, huh, that water is going down there too. Okay, so maybe for this one we'll actually move this uh, a little bit for just for today on camera because I don't feel like moving the rest of this. So we're going to get all the belts out of here. We're going to break the CVT unit and the induction motor and we're going to flip the bevel gear to be going from east to up. So then the CVT unit can be right there. Flip that around and the induction motor can be right there flip that around and there we go so we're gonna put the ratio at 32 which should be good to go now we can throw in the lubricant now that it's all set up you can see it does fill in this little lubricant portion down here but it's not going to go down at all and then the next thing we're going to do is take the graphene battery and i guess the best way for us to do this right now at least uh, or the easiest would be for me to just break this block right here put down the battery. I'm not going to keep it like this, but I'm just doing this to simplify the process. And then we do need to apply a redstone signal. So I don't have a lever on me, but we do have some redstone over here and I should have a stick in here somewhere. Uh, so we'll just do this for now. Obviously you would want a lever, but I am going to be moving this soon. This is not the finished setup. I'm just showing you guys how it works and I'll fiddle around with this off camera a little bit. But we should be able to, I want to say, throwing the torch down right here should be enough. And it should start running this really, really fast. So, okay, so the process was being a little bugged out before, uh, especially with the sound. But it is running right now. You can see that the energy is being drained from the battery. And right now, this process should be occurring. Now, it's not as fast as previously because the first one you can't set it to 32 for the first one or the torque will be too low so if we look at this this will start processing really fast for the iron um and this is almost instantaneous over here so the second and third steps are a little bit slower but the torque is low for the first one so let's see what we can actually set this to to make it work universally so 24 still not good enough what about 20 Still not good enough. What about, I mean, I know 16 works fine. Yeah, what about 18? Is that, do you need to make it 16 for this to work? Yeah, so it looks like 16 is what we need for it to work. And I'll show you guys just how fast this can process on the first step. So boom, first one immediately sent to the second one. Uh, then these do take a little bit. This one is almost instant over here. And once you're on these steps, then you're good to go and switch it back to 32. So you can pretty much almost instantly make it 32. And this is, this is really fast. I know this might look a little bit slow, but this is actually really fast and it takes a little bit of power, but not actually that much if you're processing this all at once. Uh, and this is going to be half a stack of iron. So when this thing finishes out, we should be at roughly two and a half stacks of uh, the iron flakes, at least that we can cook down. And we'll get some tungsten flakes too, which will be nice in the long run. Uh, that's going to be it for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you found it entertaining or informative in any way, please feel free to give it a like. And I don't know if we'll be covering a lot more Electrocraft stuff. There really isn't much more that the mod has to offer uh, in terms of what we need to use. I might cover things like transformers and that, but this is the main purpose of it if you guys were curious. 
Um, but yeah, that's going to be it for today. I'll talk to you guys later.